Hello there, this is Chatterbox, and this is Propulsion. No, not that Propulsion, which I released on Steam. This is my first ever game project that I tried making, and it didn't work out. The gameplay was bad, the movement was terrible, the code had so many bugs, I just look at it, it looks terrible. I was very stupid a few years ago, but now I'm slightly less stupid, and I have a lot more experience with programming and game development. So, a few days ago, I was wondering what would happen if I remade my oldest project using all of the tools that I now have at my disposal, and it turned out really well. So, let's make it! You might be wondering what the old propulsion actually was, which is a great question. At the time I created this project, I was quite into this new game called Swarm Lake, which is probably still one of my favourite games of all time. It's really simple, you just blast at these enemies and try to get as high a score as possible. I've also been working on a rocket jump style mechanic, as I was learning about game development in my spare time. Naturally, I decided to combine these, and the initial concept for Propulsion was born. I then proceeded to use that name for the rest of my projects as well, since I'm about as creative as, uh, something, I don't know. I actually started development on this new project by copying over the entire of the old project. While it probably would have been smart to just remake the entire project, I wanted to keep some of the old stuff that I'd done to save time. I initially upgraded the project from Unity 2017 to Unity 2019, but Unity 2019 didn't have quite enough of the features that I wanted to implement, so I just hopped straight up to the newest 2022 release build of the software. I was actually really surprised with how few issues I had when upgrading. All I needed to do was delete an old Pro Builder package, which I wasn't using anyway. Now this script was written mostly before this happened, but in a fun twist, this video is actually sponsored by Unity. Unity has just released Unity 2022 LTS, the latest version of the engine to go into long term support mode. This means it's the most stable, up to date version of the engine, and it brings a load of new features and updates, such as an awesome water system, an improved package manager, and many other things. Unity Dots is now fully supported for all experienced creators in the Unity editor, with ETS for Unity integration, which runs alongside and integrates with game object based assets, meaning you can use your existing Unity skills while taking advantage of greater performance. Netcode for GameObjects is out, providing a versatile first party networking solution built with scalability and performance in mind for you to use in your games. Level up your multiplayer game with services such as Relay, Lobby, Game Server Hosting, Matchmaker, and Voice and Text Chat. There have been a few upgrades to the Universal Render Pipeline, bringing new features to enhance the look of your games. Unity 2022 LTS is out now, so be sure to check the link in the description to view the blog post all about it. Since I had the engine up to date, and the game actually functioned at this point, albeit quite badly, I decided to work on probably the worst part of the old game, which is the graphics. Now, I've never been an artist, but luckily, modern technology is caught up, and I can use that as a crutch. I didn't want to scrap all of the old art assets, because I thought they had charm and they were quite interesting, so I kept them, and instead focused on one of the coolest new features in modern game development, ray tracing. I'm actually trying to save up for a car right now, but after looking at a few used cars, I decided I'd rather light my wallet on fire and buy a new graphics card instead. The advantage of this new graphics card is that I can use ray tracing, which is an awesome feature where light is realistically simulated in real time by basically bouncing lasers from your eyes in order to see. This feature is now built into Unity's high definition render pipeline, which means you can have absolutely awesome lighting with basically no effort at all. Well, I say no effort, but that's assuming you are using a modern version of Unity with their new rendering system and not their old built-in renderer. This isn't great for me, since I was using the old built-in renderer. This meant all of the custom shaders that I'd written needed to be recreated, which was quite a bit of work. The new shader graph feature was very handy and saved me a lot of time. I used it to remake all my materials, and after I set them up, I made everything shiny and ticked a few boxes, and then I had ray tracing. And I have to say, it looks awesome, or at least a lot better than it did. I love the way that the enemies reflect off the ground. There's a little problem with ray tracing though which is that it's quite performance intensive. In order to save my computer from now lighting on fire, I set up yet another handy game development piece of innovation, something called DLSS, or Deep Learning Super Sampling, which is a feature that renders the game at a lower resolution and then uses AI to upscale it, which can help with performance a lot. To do that, I had to install a package from the package manager, and as I ticked the box to enable DLSS, the noise from my computer fans finally ramped down. And there we have it, basically a complete graphics overhaul, and it only took me about 3 hours, which is excellent for the result. Now though, it was time to work on the gameplay. The problem was, I made this game about 4 years ago, and I was rubbish at programming. Looking through the code, I found Yandere dev style if else chains, some of the worst workarounds I've ever seen, and for some reason, I decided to tie a load of game events to the function that gets called when an entity gets destroyed, which is something you are really not supposed to do. This meant that reworking this was going to be hard. I didn't know how much of the project was just weirdly interlinked with this awful code, which would make it really difficult to reuse anything. Undeterred though, I set on to working on trying to get something done. I really didn't like the movement when I opened up the game again. 
Instead of trying to read through my old horrible code, I just decided to delete the old movement code and substitute it with my movement script that I use in all my projects, and it was just so much better this way. Now I'd replaced the movement, I needed to recode the old propulsion mechanics that boost the player into the air. Unfortunately, during this process, I decided to disable some audio sources, since the old sound effects I created really started to get on my nerves. I then went to bed. When I woke up in the morning, I kept working on the project, and I was really surprised when there were just errors everywhere. I was so confused, since the night before, everything was working completely fine. I swear that Unity's console was reading out line numbers in my scripts that didn't even exist, which made things even more confusing. I'd make a change to my code, and it would compile the changes, and then they just wouldn't apply. So trying to print out values to figure out what was happening just wasn't possible. I initially thought that something had messed up the way that the enemies locate the player when I changed the movement scripts around, but after looking through the code, there was no reason this would have happened. Thinking through the things I'd changed, I remembered disabling some audio sources, so I re-enabled them, and then magically, everything worked again. This was due to some of my awful hacky sound effect magic code, and I couldn't even tell you what I was trying to do with it. After deleting that, and replacing it with one of my new sound manager solutions, we were back in business. I made a small change to the propulsion code, and I was able to spring back up in the air again, and it was so much more fluid than it used to be. This tiny upgrade had made the game so much more enjoyable to play, racing past enemies and blasting them to pieces. To enhance the fun of blasting at the enemies, I decided to upgrade the player's gun a bit. At the moment, you can only destroy one enemy per shot, which is annoying if there are multiple enemies in a line. To fix that, I basically turned the player's gun into a railgun, which destroys all the enemies in a line. At this point though, I noticed it was taking a while to compile my changes to the project. This wasn't great, since I wanted to get stuff done, not sit around waiting. Luckily, I'd heard of a handy new feature added to Unity called Assembly Definitions, which essentially allows you to split out your code and reduce the amount of code you need to compile at once. After adding one of these to the folder with all my game code in, compilation speeds improved a lot. Before I move on to anything else, I need to explain the scoring system in the game. The idea is that when you destroy an enemy, they drop a gem. Picking that up gives you score, but to encourage the player to use the propulsion mechanic, I decided to make it so that if the player manages to hit two gems together, they combine to form a larger gem that gives you more score than if you just picked up two small ones. The problem was, the code for this functionality was terrible, so I rewrote it entirely and tried to fix everything. After a little while, I was able to pick up the gems, and then after that, I added the code that allowed me to merge them again. While doing this, I also partially rewrote the code for the enemies, making use of inheritance to clean up the code and make it slightly less terrible. I then realised I had a weird bug with rocket boosting, where if you aimed in a specific direction, then for some reason it would push you in the opposite direction. I remember this bug from the first time I worked on this project, and I couldn't figure it out. This time, I decided to come at it from a different angle. I didn't think that the code for the jumping was wrong, since I'd used a similar approach in the real propulsion, and that didn't have any issues like that. That made me realise it was probably something that was different here. My first thought was that the player's collision was different, and then I realised it. The way I find the direction to shoot the player is by shooting a laser from the camera and then seeing where that hits the floor. From that, we can get a point where we apply the force to boost everything away from it. But if that laser was getting intercepted by the player's collider, then it would cause a similar behaviour. I stopped that being able to happen, and then the bug was fixed. At this point, the game was functioning decently, but I'd removed the UI at an earlier point to make debugging easier, and in the process of everything, I'd completely broken it. Since I'd also changed rendering pipelines, I also needed to redo one of the effects in the menu that allows the user to change the colour of the level. I was originally using Unity's old post-processing stack, this doesn't work anymore since HDRP has its own post-processing stack. Fixing that was easy enough though, I just hooked up the new post-processing effect value to the old system. I was getting a bit bored of the old music. When I made this game, I had no idea how to make music, and I still don't, but I thought it'd be fun to challenge myself and make something interesting, so I booted up Ableton. I had no idea what the music for this would sound like, but I had a visual style, so I tried to convert that into music. I started with just a drum beat and a bass line, but I thought it sounded a little empty, so I added a small bit of background ambience to flesh out the sound a tiny bit. This gave me an almost techno sounding part that I decided to use for my verse. For the next part, I created a chorusy pad sound and changed up the drum beat. I also halved the speed of the bass line to change the feel a tiny bit. This part linked back nicely into the verse section. This didn't feel like it would be sonically interesting enough for the player for the duration of the game though, so I decided that I'd add another part with a bit more spice. For that, I employed a trick I commonly use and made a lead part. A lot of bass patches actually make quite good leads when you use them at a higher pitch, and that's what I did. To really emphasise this part, I added a little chop drum fill before it. I duplicated things around here and there and added a few little touches, and then the music was done. To be honest, I'm not upset with the result here, it's quite cool, so I added it into the game. You might have noticed that the menu for the game looks terrible, so I quickly looked on Google Fonts to find something a bit nicer. 
I implemented that, and I'm a bit happy with how it looks now. I then realised I'd actually forgot to make the player able to lose, which isn't great. I did actually have some old code for this, and it also had a really cool feature where the time would slow down after you got hit, which is a pretty decent effect for someone who'd probably only been programming for about 3 months when I made this. In the process of patching up all this code, I also found out I'd been working on a janky re-implementation of Superhot's game mechanics, but it was a bit rubbish, so I removed it. I added a tiny bit of logic using Unity's player prefs to store and load high scores, and then the game was done. For a few days work, I think I finally made the game that old me had in mind when I set out to create this, and I'm happy that I finished it. I've built and uploaded the game and put it on itch.io, I think you'll need a recent NVIDIA GPU to run this game. You might be able to try it on a new AMD GPU, but I haven't written any logic regarding turning on and off DLSS, so don't get your hopes up. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, you can like the video and subscribe to see some more stuff like this in the near future. I have a Discord server that you can join if you want, and the actual propulsion is available on Steam. Have a good day.